and uh, Lynn is on the line. Uh, Lynn's votes are not included in these totals. We'll leave her for dialogue. Uh, let me show you how the value points totaled up. And what we did is I gave five points to your top candidate, four to your second top, blah, 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 and one to your bottom. So the higher score means the more people thought more highly of. Okay, the highest vote getter was Dr. Anderson at 26. The next highest was a tie between Mr. Sharo and Mr. Hall at 19 each. The next vote uh, toll uh, was Mr. Seebeck at 17. And uh, Ms. Weber was at 10. So I'll repeat that if you want to hear that. Anderson, 26. Uh, Sharo, 19. Hall, 19. Seebeck, 17. Weber, 10. Um, and there's a bit of diversity <laughs> in some of those numbers. Um, and we can begin maybe dialoguing a little bit of how we feel. What it appears to me, and I'll just throw this out as a straw man for people to react to, is that Mr. Anderson appears to be the, the top one and pretty much was on every ballot except one. Um, and Ms. Weber seems to be the lowest one, and that's pretty much true except in one. Um, we could isolate those and then talk about the other three if we want to go that route. And I'm just throwing that out there as a straw man. I think that's probably a good way to go. Yeah. Scott, Angela, oh, yeah. John, Yvonne, mm -hmm. yeah. Kim. Because I really liked Mrs. Weber. So I have a little bit of, you just want to not. You don't have to. Okay. I mean, we, 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 we can have the discussion. Let's have the discussion. That's exactly what we should do. Um, uh, let's go around the table one at a time and, and talk about what you saw positively about Ms. Weber and what you saw as is things that could have been stronger that, that you wish you'd seen and did not. So I'll start to my left. Why don't we start with, oh, we'll start with, we'll start with Kim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like her two PhDs in, at Michigan State uh, in curriculum and instruction, and that is ranked number nine in the nation by U.S. News as far as um, the PhD for leading a school. And in our focus groups, they had said they wanted somebody with experience in curriculum. They thought, um, the community thought that would take us to the next level. So that's another reason that I really like her. And then she has two PhDs, and the one's in educational leadership. So she's not only worked, but she's also uh, been educating herself the entire time. And she has been on the cutting edge of innovation especially when she was at Liverpool in New York. And when she's Im implementing these cutting edge technology courses, including Project First Robotics, Cisco Networking, A++, which my sister worked for Fairfax Schools. And she told me specifically about this program because these kids come out of high school and are able to get jobs making $60,000 a year. So I mean, these are the kind of things that we want to look at. Project Lead the Way in Destination Ima Imagination. So I see a lot of strengths of how we want to move forward as a district with her, and she mentioned collaboration quite a bit in that she uh, enjoys it and she likes to tap into experts. And I think for us to go to the next level, that's what we're going to need to be able to do. Iman? Yes. I, I just want to make sure. <coughs> Oh, but I, I thought both. It was only to the point where she had completed to all but dissertation, and I had. That, that is correct. That the degree isn't completed. Yeah, the coursework is complete. Dissertation is not. Yeah. But There's been no degree granted. And part of the one of the questions I asked her too was, would she consider doing her dissertation on the international baccalaureate and project-based learning, which would also then make her highly educated about our specific district. She never did provide an affirmative answer, just to no, be clear. No, she, she said she would consider She said that. she would think about it. Yeah. Consider it, yeah. yeah. But we could write that in the I mean, I mean, the dissertation, that, um, anyone that's done a PhD knows that that is, that's the hurdle. 
not okay. everything leading up to it. It's the research. It's the writing it up. It's the defense. The that, that's the, defense, that's the, the big review. hurdle. So it's not that she's done everything and has a little bit left. She's got a big left. That, I mean, dissertation is huge. She's had a while to do it. Yvonne. Okay, the things that I liked about her were probably a lot the same as the things that Kim mentioned. I like what she said about the uh, vocational education programs, the industrial arts, things that she, the changes that she made in the program offerings at Liverpool transformed their programs into cutting edge, state of the art programs. Um, uh, she talked, I, I thought she talked about 21st century learning, uh, something she said that I, I like the sound of. She said, kids come in powered up, we can't ask them to power down. I like that a lot. Uh, she talked about having challenged teachers to flip their classrooms. She talked about using, currently using, I think this is in Duran, blended learning programs. Uh, I think she talked about, or maybe it's, I just read it here, bringing senior citizens into classrooms. I liked all of those things. Um, I also like that she really stressed collaboration and good working relationships. I like that idea a lot. I liked all the things she said about special ed, reduced need for services by using response to intervention model. Um, and then I also liked talk, her talking about keeping cuts away from the classrooms. So I thought those were all strengths for her. What you see is things that she <coughs> would not bring to the table that you wish she would have seen? Um, I thought she did kind of lacks some of the experience we were looking for, like have, she has not worked with IB programs. Doesn't mean she can't or wouldn't be successful with it, but I thought that was, you know, when you're looking at different people, I thought um, some of the people did have that experience. So I guess I thought that was a little bit of a weakness. I had some, a couple other things too, but that was the primary thing I think was that, um, you know, she has the advantage of having been in Midland before, so certainly she knows the community well, but, um, I don't think she's, well, I think um, what I saw really was that lack of experience with IB programs and although she did talk uh, a lot about technology too, didn't she, now that I think about that. So that was a strength also. Um, I just felt <coughs> that, um, I guess I kind of thought maybe she is really well suited for a district like Durand but not as much for a district like Midland. Okay, fair enough. John? Um, as far as the strengths go uh, for this candidate, um, I liked her experience, and, and I looked at the experiences that she had being in the district that she's at as a superintendent. I know she had um, some experiences related to technology and programs and so forth, related to as an early adopter of innovation, but that was more as an super, assistant superintendent. If, I, I, um, I looked at that was maybe not as much that was done in her district as a superintendent. Uh, but I thought a strength was experience in evaluating teacher effectiveness and how to use that as a, a driver for uh, growth as opposed to being punitive. I thought that was a plus. Uh, she's dealt with school closures. Uh, we do have a building to close coming up uh, here soon. I thought that was a plus. Um, but as a minus, I really thought with the question that the board asked about her 90-day plan, I thought she could have more uh, more effectively developed that and, and come um, into more detail uh, on, on what she would do, um, in particular how they'd be tailored to our district. Um, and, um, and, and it was sort of a question for me with um, completing the PhD work. Um, you know, that would, um, I would like to have seen those completed, and, and, and I'm with Angela, I understand that. There's a fair amount of work that remains with that, um, but um, that, that was just sort of a, uh, it could turn into a plus, but it was a bit of a minus. Okay. All right, um, I mean, like you guys, I saw some of those strengths and I like some of the things she's done, so I won't repeat some of those. i uh, say one of the things for me, she seemed like she, loves to do things outside of the district. I think, wasn't she like a consultant National or something? Mm -hmm. There was National that, she's developing this thing. I think she sounds like she's phenomenal at those things. So I almost saw her more as the consultant type, not our specific superintendent type. You know, someone that you would tap into as a resource, um, not necessarily someone who would lead our district. So, cause she had, she's done some phenomenal things that mm -hmm. were very in <coughs> interesting and seemed like she very much likes 
you know, to educate herself and with all that she's done. So that that was that was my feeling on it. Okay. That's well said, Scott. I, I agree with everybody's assessment of uh, of Miss Weber. Um, I, I thought one of the things for me, without rehashing all the pros, I, I thought she was a, she was a great person. She had great credentials. Um, getting to the cons because that's really the driving issue as to why we all made our decision. Um, she's just coming from a very small district in comparison to NPS, mm -hmm. and, and having those PhDs hanging out there in the overwhelming. Uh, amount of time I think it's going to take for her to achieve that and complete that in addition to jumping in a district four times the size of where she's coming from is just going to be too much for her to handle. Uh, and I think uh, she could have developed her 90-day plan uh, a little more thoroughly. Um, overall, I just thought she would have, she's, she's good for where she's at for, for a district the size of Durand. Mm -hmm. I didn't think she would be a great fit for, for us. Okay. And I'll save mine for last. I saw her as a uh, academic expert. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the, having completed the degree or not completed the degree did not mean that much to me because we have many leaders here that have not completed their degree. Mm -hmm. So the knowledge base was was obviously there. Uh, what I didn't see uh, come through well enough for me, especially vis-a-vis -vis the other candidates, was the driving leadership attributes of what she drove, the, especially Durand, to, and where she was driving it to. Um, I saw her implement some things in New York, mm -hmm. okay, in terms of implement some stuff in New York, but you know, if we're, if we're hiring a leader, I wanna look for those leadership characteristics, and those didn't come through as, as strongly as some of the other candidates did for me. So academic, resource, uh, mm -hmm. expert, yes, leader, I didn't see the traits. So that's where I came with mine. Um, okay. So the question is, where do we do from here? Um, that's fine. Okay. If we want to go, if you know, everybody feels strongly. Really liked her though; she was wonderful. Um, do we? We've got it down to three, basically. Right? No. Well, we oh. we dealt four names. That would be that's for, we dealt with that one into the poll. Um, Dave, you look like you're trying to signal me. <laughs> I just wanted to make a, a, a suggestion to the board and feel free to re, uh, reject it. Um, but um, Dr. Anderson's score was so consistently high and higher than the other candidates that I think you, it, unless yeah. that you might want to say he's in and concentrate on the next. And, and that's where I'm going next. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going, that's right where I'm going, Dave. That that's right. right where I'm going. Okay, so I think we have consensus on, on Ms. Weber on where we're headed there. So Dave's comment, now let's go to the other poll. Uh, uh, Dr. Anderson was top in one, two, three, four, second top in one, and quite a bit lower in a third, and, and, and the last one, if you want to call it the last one. Um, anybody want to comment to that, especially if whoever thought less of him than the others? Was that you? I put him first. Okay, anybody? But I was going to say, so some of my concerns with him yep. um, were, one, that he's in a growing district, not a shrinking district, so yep. he does not have the experience of dealing with what we're dealing with. Um, two, the budget cuts it sounds like he's been making have not at all been to the level of what yep. we're looking at doing. Um, three, it sounds like he's always had hunky-dory union negotiations which concerns me because I wouldn't say that we're there. Um, so j just some of those things were a little, con you know, concerning to me. Other than that, I thought, you know, presentation yep. skill. I mean, there were a lot of things that I thought were definitely um, pluses too with him. Anybody else want to contribute to that discussion? My, my hesitation, I'll, I'll tell you what my hesitation was, was exactly yours. He has a lever arm, at least the way I interpreted him in Wisconsin, that we do not enjoy. And that is, he can go to the voters and ask for operating funds in a district that's that's envisioned growing, mm -hmm. and uh, that will be a lever arm he doesn't have if he were to come to Midland. And we'll have to question that if we do take the, this round. Remember, we'll have a second round to dig into those kind of questions. And I, uh, I guess I'll make that point now. We're not making a final selection here. We're we're sitting there going, well, who do we want to dig deeper into? Right. Is he, the question. He has the skills to help. A district grow though too and that's what I yep. really liked about yep. him he knows how to improve the district and attract people 
to the point where he isn't bothered by people choosing to go uh, have the IB at 11th and 12th grade. Um, and also, according to Midland Tomorrow, we are in a slow growth mode for all age groups. So these are people choosing to leave our district still that we can we need to retain, and we really would take care of a lot of our problems. Okay, so what I'm hearing is no violent objection to putting him into the hopper no, of bring back. Okay, so Dr. Anderson will be brought back for a second interview. That leaves us with, um, or at least we'll vote on that when it's all done, that, that when it's late. Um, we have, uh, I believe it's Mr. Sharo and Dr. Hall as the next two that were tied, and, and uh, Rick Seebeck was right there also. I'm talking 19, 19, and 17 here, so the differentiation is very small. Um, there's quite a bit of diversity in those. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what I want to talk about in terms of opinions. Uh, Do we want to re-vote on Hall and Sharo to see if we? No, I, I would much prefer to hear everybody's opinion. input opinion because I, you know I have what I heard, mm -hmm. and yes. I would love to hear everybody yeah. else's. And then we and then we may come back to that. Right, you exactly. all have different. Perspectives. Right, everyone has different, different, and, and I like. And to the hear fact other that people. it's so wide, mm -hmm. we need to have the discussion. <laughs> if they were all threes and all fours, you know that right, that right. tells me one thing. But when the, when it, the diversity of votes were so wide. Uh, let's go there. Um, well, who do we start with? Um, let's talk about Mr. L start from the bottom, go up. Let's talk about Mr. Seebeck. Um, that's a wide range, so I can't point to anybody. We go from someone who thought he was the best to someone who thought he was the weakest, and everything in between. So I'm going to go. I will exercise prerogative this time, Scott, and start to the left. All right. Um, I, I like Rick. Uh, he was uh, uh, one of the higher choices for me. Um, I thought it was great that he had eight years' experience as a superintendent, and he, I, I thought based on his presentation, uh, he's achieved some pretty, pretty unique results. Um, I, I found him to be a very strong people person, which I think is important in our superintendent to go out there and to make the relationships with members in the community. Uh, he seemed very energized. He was very charismatic, and he seemed hungry for the job, like he wanted, really wanted it, really wanted to succeed. Um, I, I didn't like that he didn't have any IB experience. I thought that was that was kind of a, a little bit of a downer. Um, he struck me as being very innovative. He was a creative thinker. Uh, I liked that he went to Meridian to learn about new tech, going way out of his way, anticipating that that was going to be something we were going to discuss, uh, because he didn't have the ability to get that experience uh, in his district. Um, I liked how he uh, was very collaborative and involving the community and how he said he wanted to explain things to the community in terms of why we needed to change and, and what the methodology was going to be behind it. Uh, so th those are my, my thoughts, I guess, on, on Mr. Siebeck. Um Overall, I, th I thought he was a pretty strong candidate. Okay. And Lynn, just a heads up, I'm going to come to you in, uh, after two more people, so be ready to talk about Rick when we get there. Angela. All right. I also very much liked um, his passion and his energy. I just, I mean, I'm one that believes that that is very contagious. And so it, someone at the top who has that hopefully would filter down to um, everyone else. Um, I liked his creativity, like you said, um, where he talked about different programs that he, you know, he said, I stole it from here and I stole it from here. But he didn't just steal them. He actually looked and assessed and um, changed it to fit what he was trying to do in his own district. Um, like you said about going to see Meridian, um, I also thought it was great. He said he anticipated the leadership question. He didn't tell us what he thought. He said he went out and asked the people that worked for him what they thought his leadership style was. So I thought that was um, great. Let's see. Um, let's see. I, I got to say, he stressed how he's data driven. I'm an engineer, I'm data driven, so I, I did like that about him. Um, he talked a lot about development of trust, um, and I do think that that is also really important too, because I know so many times, I mean in the workplace, when I'm dealing with people, you know, from other companies and stuff, if there's not trust, we spend a lot of time, I just had one yesterday, we spend a lot of time doing things that we, I mean, we're wasting time doing things because there's not that trust um, built there. One of the things that did concern me, um, which a lot of the other candidates had, was 
he really only has experience in one district. And at that level, I mean, I like the people who have been in different districts who have seen different ways of doing things to be able to draw on different ways. So if there was something that I saw as a negative, I would say that that um, was something that I saw as a negative. Good point. Okay. <clears throat> on the plus for Mr. Sebeck, um, I was impressed with how he turned the district around. And uh, he innovated to be able to do that. Um, he went and radically changed the culture. I thought that that was a very a good plus. Um, and how he inspired the teachers to excel and challenge themselves and to take personal ownership in the student achievement I thought was, was very great. I, uh, I look at his communication style, which is very different than a number of our other candidates. And his energy and, um, is contagious. He, you know, he's a type of leader that makes you want to follow. I'm just looking at the size of the district and how his communication leadership style would work in a district this size. It, it may be difficult to have that le level of energy to be duplicated or delegated to all the directors, all the principals in the building. So that was just a question that I had. Um, and uh, overall, very impressed. Um, I just would have to I just have to look at that particular trait as uh, how would that work in a smaller district compared to a larger one and the delegation piece and the, uh, the, the way that the interaction with um, sort of that mid-level staff, there'd be like another level of, uh, of uh, the organization in between him and, and students and teachers and how would he deal with that. Lynn, your turn. Did I lose you? Can you hear me? Yep, can hear you. Yep. Yeah, I'm having a hard time hearing some of you, some of all of you, but um, most of what I what I heard is I would I would agree with, and someone commented that Rick has only been in one district, and of course he was in Midland Public prior to that, so that would be that was one of my concerns. He's got a great personality. He's so innovative and creative. Know, can he can he bring that keep that energy level up in a district our size? Maybe so. Um, but again, he's done great things. <coughs> excuse me, great things in, in Gladwin. Um, but is that enough experience to come come back to a district our size? Fair enough, Yvonne. Well, I was <clears throat> just really impressed with the things he's done in Gladwin. I um, I he was one of my fairly high choices um, and the student achievement he says that he led Gladwin to significant increases in student achievement um, and I wrote all these things down uh, select Gladwin schools recognized as reward schools I mean I thought that was amazing the uh, just the improvement in student achievement because that's really what it's all about so I thought that was great also his um, fiscal concerns I mean he balanced the budget in a financially distressed district that must have been really tough to do so I was impressed with those abilities I think mm -hmm. um, and also like John said he's the kind of leader you want to follow I thought and so <coughs> the fact that he uh, didn't have a lot of experience with 21st century learning little experience but I thought he had a lot of ideas um, and I thought maybe he just needs the right place to do those things so that's kind of um, and he talked about special ed. He seemed to have a passion for that, too. He said um, that they used early intervention to reduce the need before the label was applied. I like that idea a lot. Um, oh, and, and he also said that he looked at all expenditures, you know, and looked at programs. He's, and I like the data-driven part of it, too. He looked to see are they effective and then considered whether to keep them if they couldn't see the results. So I thought those were all practical, very good things. I like that a lot. And I think really the only... Um, well, he seems to me to be very results oriented. I like that. So the only thing that I thought was, um, you know, maybe not quite there was that he hasn't had the opportunity to do some of these things in Gladwin that he'd like to do here. So. That's a good point. Well, I just didn't think he could make the <coughs> leap from Gladwin schools to run Midland Public Schools. That's all. He had great traits, fantastic, but I just didn't think he'd be able to do it, as well as some of the other candidates. Wouldn't that just be a matter of adopting those traits to a, a larger size? I mean, the traits are fundamental, <coughs> so whether they're there I think or not. some people, exactly, some people could do that, and I think we have other candidates who would be able to do that a little bit more easily. Yeah, I struggled between the three candidates we're going to talk mightily. 
because what I saw in each of them were some very decided strengths, some very decided questions, none of them which were the same. I mean, some of them seemed to be opposites. <laughs> well, one guy's very decided strengths uh, were the other guy's very decided absences. Um, my concern about Rick on the, on the <coughs> downside is, on the plus side, let me go plus side first, definitely has accomplished some things. When you look for results, mm -hmm. he's gotten results, no doubt about it. Um, I shouldn't say no doubt about it, but very, very strong. How he got some things done were fairly impressive. My concern is in a smaller operation, the cult of personality can be enough energy to move a whole organization. In a bigger organization, that energy is definitely needed, definitely help, but is, is necessary but not necessarily sufficient. And what I can't tell is can he bridge that indiv what he's done to drive things individually to accomplish in Gladwin across a broader, bigger organization. Right. It, it, it's kind of thinking what you were saying, Kim. I, it's just a, th this could be, he could be perfect and, and, and be very, very good at that. We just don't know that. And so that's my only reluctance um, on, on Rick is, is, that, is that question. So uh, it doesn't make me want to throw him in the basket with Ms. Weber and say we shouldn't consider him further until I hear about the other two because it's, it's, they're so close <coughs> and so, so many questions in my mind. So, you know, let's talk about the other two and then, then we'll start right. and we'll come to some conclusions. So, Mr. Sherrill? Let's do Mr. Sherrill next. All, All right. right. Well, I mean, you were just talking about energy and how it's necessary in small communities and bridging gaps, I think this is just the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, you know, strengths and deficits are clearly there. He comes from a small community. Can he bridge the gap from his successful Algonac district with a huge fund balance to coming to our situation, uh, which I think is we have our own set of problems, but we're on a much, much, much bigger scale. Um, you know, everybody seems to acknowledge on the board that you have to have a level of energy that's contagious and that can bring people uh, into your ideas and make them want to follow you. I got to tell you, after 10 minutes, I was kind of zoning out listening to him. Just to be perfectly honest, I didn't feel like he had the energy or passion uh, that the other candidates uh, displayed. Uh, he clearly has got some notable accomplishments. I mean, you know, having Algonac Community Schools become an IB uh, district is, is Fantastic. His work with the voters and referendums is, is definitely notable. Um, but I just didn't feel like he was a, the, the person we were looking for in terms of charisma, in terms of being able to work with community leaders and to draw people into our district. Um, yeah, he does <coughs> definitely, I would say, the public speaking st skills and the energy were something that I felt were kind of a negative with him. Um, you mentioned a lot of positives. One other that um, stood out to me is he talked about um, the county where they're at and working together on a lot of different programs. And I think that one thing that stood out, I thought, you know, going forward, that is going to be more and more important that we start looking at those types of things. So that was another strength that I saw that I'm not sure if I really saw a lot of that with any of the other candidates. So that was something that stood out to me as a um, positive and then pretty much all the other um, positives that Scott said. Okay. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I agree the, uh, that uh, Mr. Sharrow probably could have been uh, more, more peppy and more energetic. Um, also, I know from doing a fair amount of interviewing, um, uh, in in my practice is that not everybody interviews very well. Um, so um, would that be different in a secondary round of interviews? Uh, you know, could be uh, remain to be seen. The, the one thing that that impressed me about Mr. Sharrow is the is the top scoring, the top achieving uh, data in his district. If you look at best practices, and there was such a wide variety of programming options, and I think that as we look forward for Midland Public Schools, where we're going to I want to position ourselves as being able to manage multiple options. And I thought that that was exemplary in his district. Um, and actually, Mr. Sharrow's district is a little bit bigger as far as the budget and student size than Mr. Sebeck's. Um, he has experience with uh, the bond project, $38 million bond project. 
Uh, they're in the process of implementing one-to-one -one com the computing model. Um, and at, at some point, I think Midland Public Schools can retool and, and, uh, and go after that again. Um, and I thought it was very novel with his approaches towards some of the budgetary challenges, uh, funding the IV program, for example, uh, looking at uh, some of the personnel uh, decisions and so forth. Um, so I just thought he was innovative, and, and especially with some of the, uh, of the teaching, online learning, and things like that, it's really his cutting edge, and especially with the achievement scores, I was very impressed. <coughs> uh, Lynn, got to go to Lynn. <laughs> Lynn, Mr. Sharo. But she was Lynn. <laughs> You have to come off mute, Lynn. Yep, I, yep. I'm, I'm putting you on mute. You I know. know. <laughs> so you don't hear all our, our Carmen and everything else going on. Um, and, and I have to apologize. I don't have my notes and I'm sitting in a dark car. So, um, Mr. Sharo, I thought, um, had been involved and had experience with a lot of, of the, the programs that, that all of you mentioned with the IV um, and the technology and, and even forward thinking with, with technology and, and talking about the blended learning and I believe he talked about the classrooms and all kinds of uh, programming like that. He also talked about, it sounds like he has a very good uh, relationship and collaboration with staff and his administrative team. What else am I going to say? Um, I, I agree. I kind of wondered about the, the energy, but I felt like he was um, in, the, in the enthusiasm. But as someone else mentioned, in their interviews, not everybody does those uh, as well as others. And it might be, I feel he'd be warranted to come, it would be warranted to come, have him come back for a second interview and see, and see how that goes. Um, in his small district and being down in that, that area to uh, have the scores and the and achievements that they have had down there, pretty incredible when you think of Macomb and St. Clair, Fulton County area. And he's, he's dealt with a, a diverse population, mm -hmm. as he said, a very diverse population. And I think uh, he could bring that experience to Midland if he become more and more diverse. So I think that's all mm -hmm. off the top of my head here. Yep. Thank you. You're uh -huh. on. Well, Mr. Sharo was my first choice, and I think in terms of his interview style, I thought at first, too, that he seemed a little low-key, but I had to remember that he followed Rick Seebeck, so a lot of people would seem low-key. <laughs> yeah. It was Stark. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. So, you know, that wasn't real, and really an advantage for him, but the other thing, too, is that I felt as he went along that he, he uh, maybe relaxed a little bit or... Maybe I just took to him more. I don't know. But I, I felt that as he went along, he did much better. And I felt like I could really feel the pa his passion for what he does come through. And I thought I saw him as just being super innovative. One thing he said that I really liked the sound of, I thought I, I was really impressed with. He said, the next 10 years, in the next 10 years, education is going to change dramatically, <coughs> faster than ever before. And I just got the impression that he's ready for that after I listened to all the th innovative things they've done in Algonac. In a very small district, I was really impressed with that. And their student achievement and all the programs that they have, the IB, they have, they have nine IB graduates this year in a small school. I thought that was very impressive. Forty-two percent of their students are involved with IB classes. Um, another thing I really liked a lot was to have an elementary school that serves as an after-hours Wi-Fi center. How innovative. Uh, I talked about, he seemed very proud of their dynamic media center, flipped classrooms. He seemed to just to really um, be very... I just felt like I, I could feel his passion for those things come through. Uh, let's see. Oh, and I really liked, I thought this was so innovative also, the graduation coach. What a great idea. He just seemed like a real idea guy to me. He talked about year-round scheduling of school. Uh, and then he also said that he thought he would be the person to move Midland from good to great. And I thought, how can you argue with that? So, oh, and I, I have more. <laughs> 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 he said, um, well, he talked about having wonderful relationships with um, the staff, even though they've had to give up things and they've done it. I thought that was great. Um, and he also said, I like the sound of this too, he said, we still need professional teachers who need to be paid. I liked all of that a lot. Can I say one thing? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. You, you mentioned his tenure statements. One concerning tenure statement that he did mention is that he's at the end of his career, and in 10 years he's going to be retired. 
Did he say 10? Yeah. Okay. He said he's got about 10 years left in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was concerned about that, that in the twilight of his career, and uh, I maybe don't it's know not if there anyone anymore. else is in any different situation. I should say Dr. Hanson is in the same place, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. Yeah, he's he, right. I think, he I think 10 years would be a good. Uh, I'll, I'll take somebody for 10 years. Is yeah. good. Yeah. I, I think and, it's a pretty decent. Thought, to me, he had both breadth and depth of yep. experience. He just seemed like a total package to me somehow. Just I just really felt like he could bring all those innovations here. He could operate on that same level. And he's been in federal history. Mm hmm Kim. Oh, well, I agree with what you said. He was very innovative. It was sort of, I think uh, his personality didn't shine. Mm -hmm. And because as I was looking at my list, I'm like, there's really nothing wrong mm -hmm. with him. <laughs> nothing. He has <laughs> everything we need, but do I I'm think maybe the others can do it a bit better? That was, so he is probably one I should look at again. Is, is if that's what the rest of the group thinks, I think I'll look closer. <laughs> Thank you. I go back to my, my leadership comment. Uh, and does past, how, how can past predict future? Mm -hmm. And to Yvonne's point, of all the candidates, I feel he's accomplished the most in his district in a six-year period. All the innovations he brought in, and it wasn't just the innovations, he got to the heart of our process questions more than any other candidate, I thought. He, um, he articulated very well how he uh, worked with the union and the ideas that came out of that in terms of uh, one of the things I thought was great of, of how do we lower costs without having an immediate impact on pay. And Scott, to your, to your comment, um, when he got there, it wasn't necessarily at that kind of fund equity. You know, it, it, it grew, it got good, it mm -hmm. grew. He's the most, he's the best district between two counties. Now, you know, now you can argue, you know, about the counties if you want to. But Warren County is a big populous county. We're talking Utica and all those kind of districts. And he's got the best MEEP scores in, the, in those, some of those districts. Um, so I, I just was very impressed with what he has accomplished. You know, that, that's, that's how I would say it. And and in what how he went about accomplishing it, those two big factors. Uh, to use a euphemism that I probably shouldn't say, does he look good in the shower? You know that they say about athletes. You know, you shouldn't, the, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe not, right there. because because he did not come across with the energy, did not come across with the passion, but all that is antithetical to what he's accomplished. And so, I too am scared that it was. Was it just the interviewing skills? <clears throat> and when I see such high accomplishment, I'd hate, I would not be able to sleep with myself if we dismissed a candidate just because he didn't interview well. And so that's why I really want to bring him in for a second interview. Uh, uh, Dave can consult with him a little bit and coach him on this and give him that feedback. And let's see how he does the second time. And that's why I, I've got him where he is because of the same thing Yvonne said, and, and I'd love to see him interview a second time, see if we get a different perception of, of that energy level, et cetera. That's all I can say. Um, that leaves Dr. Hall. Start at the other end. Yep. Um, I like Dr. Hall quite a bit. Um, Can you start at the other end? I have, I have my sheet ready. I can start I in the middle. Yeah, start in the middle. Go John, ahead. John can go. I'll start in the middle. Okay. There you go. Okay. Um, with uh, with Dr. Hall, um, I, I was uh, I was very impressed with his ascension to um, to his career path. Um, both both, and I bring that up both as a pro and a con. Um, Mr. Hall has just been, uh, a, I'm sorry, Dr. Hall, yes, um, has been, uh, if, if you look at, uh, you know, going through his education, uh, becoming a, a pr a principal director and so forth, uh, getting his PhD and so forth, it's been quite, quite a rapid uh, career development, uh, which is impressive. Um, I just look at the number of years that we've spent at each step and how much time there's been to evaluate outcomes of uh, implementing programs and achievement and as a principal director and so forth. Um, but when you're a young ascending career, uh, 
achiever, you, you may you may not get to your destination level and, and have a long time um, if you just arrived there uh, two years at Swartz Creek. Uh, so I look at it as a pro and a con, or an unknown and a pro. Um, I was very impressed with uh, how he presented his 100-day plan minus the 10 or the 90-day plan. I uh, was very impressed that uh, the way he carried himself, the way he executed, very much on task, uh, very succinctly asked, answered the questions, and uh, I, I thought he organized his, his thoughts very, very well. And I think that that is, uh, you know, being able to cite some of the, uh, of, of the technical aspects of, of, the, of the education business and be able to apply that to um, situations that come up. I thought he had the ability to be uh, to use best practices and apply data-driven uh, decisions or, or um, use data-driven uh, processes to make great decisions. As far as innovation, I liked how he did the homeschool outreach. Um, and I, I believe that that was Dr. Hall, where he was able to com uh, convert some uh, full-time equivalent with the homeschool um, outreach. I thought that that was very innovative. And he does have some experience with the building project, uh, which he kind of walked right into. <coughs> as a uh, as another uh, another minus, um, I uh, I don't know how much progress he's been able to make working with the um, with some of the labor issues in Swartz Creek. I know he walked into some of that. Um, I think that that our future leader would uh, uh, we would like to that leader to have s some ability to work no matter how high those walls are to be able to bridge uh, some of those uh, those divides and and that's again, hard in such a short period of time to really fully evaluate. Um, but overall, I was very impressed. And I think out of all of our candidates, um, I believe he has the largest number of students in the district and the largest budget to manage, if I rank those accordingly. So I was, I was very impressed. I don't know which direction you want to go for me. Let's go that way. <coughs> all right. Um, let's see. First of all, one of my um, pluses for Jeff was that he just seemed to have a very strong and confident personality, and I thought that would be very good um, as a leader. But I have to admit, I had a lot more negatives than I have positives, merely because of the short amount of time that he's been a superintendent. And it was very hard to really pull out what he's really done. And not because he hasn't done anything. He just hasn't. I mean, he hasn't even been in that role for two years. It's very hard to be able to say I've done this and this and this. You know, some of the things he's done seem to be, you know, plucked right from MPS. You know, some of the cuts that he had to make, there weren't, you know, really unique cuts or, you know, that type of thing. Um, so that, that was the one thing that I um, saw as a huge drawback, that if we're really looking for someone who's had experience and who has done you know, even half the list of the things that we have that he just hasn't been in his role long enough for us to really evaluate how effective he is as a superintendent. So <coughs> that, that would be what I would see as a drawback. You know, other than that, like I said, very strong, confident personality. Yes, seem very organized, very, you know, all the traits that I think would be good. Just very hard to say, you know, how can we really assess how he would done. A lot of these other candidates have been superintendents much longer, it's easier to pinpoint and say, this is what I did and this is what I did. You know, it's very hard when it shows up in their, you know, MEEP scores that they made, you know, adequate yearly progress to say, is that because of something you did or something that was done before because of the lag, you know, and a lot of that type of testing, even things like that. So um, that, that's just my big concern with him is the experience factor. Scott? Um, I guess talking about the experience factor, I don't think his achievements were really thoroughly vetted in our conversations with him in terms of what he actually did versus what was already in place and heading toward that direction anyway. So uh, it, it, that is one factor I think he's, that I think we need to consider in terms of whether or not we bring him back for a second interview. And I think we should because I think that should be explored. Uh, I disagree regarding his career path. I think he's a, his career is taken off like a rocket. This guy's a shooting star. And uh, I think he's done great things in, in, in a short period of time. And I think that's a good thing. Um, that, that shows tremendous leadership ability to be able to adapt and to, to achieve all that in, in, a, in that short period of time. Um, I like that in regards of cuts, when his administration or his teachers, and they took a 5% pay cut, despite being under contract, he says, three months into the job, give me a 5% pay cut. I think that's leading by example. 
And I think that's a great trait to have um, because people will follow you if you <coughs> lead the way by example. Um, I think he's, John, you mentioned a little bit of uh, issues with, in terms of negotiations. Um, I thought he said he was successful with four unions um, in terms of reaching settlements or agreements except for the teachers the union. Big one. And that was just a the giant problem that he walked into the that was out of his control. Sure. Um, and that's just going to take time to heal. Um, sure. A long time to heal, I think, uh, given that situation. Very <laughs> data-driven. I, I agree with all the pros. John, you, a lot of the pros you mentioned I, I had right here in front of me, so I'm not going to just rehash them. Yep. Um, you know, it's undeniable. He, he is a little bit young in terms of a superintendent, two years. I, d I don't think uh, we should throw him out of the hunt uh, based solely on that situation. I really like that he has seen the charters up close and personal, and you could see the fear in him. And he has uh, taken it to the next level and is competing because he knows he has to or he won't survive. Uh, I did write the president of the Board of Education at Swartz Creek, and of course he gave him a wonderful reference. And one of my friends who hires for a big insurance company, I asked, what's the big question you ask uh, before you hire somebody? He said, ask if they had the opportunity, if they would hire him again. And he said in a heartbeat, he was both an outstanding administrator and a quality individual. Um, so that was good news. And let's see, I really like that he has uh, training and interest-based bargaining, that he took the 5% cut, and his 100-day plan was excellent. And he was thrown into the frying pan at Swartz Creek uh, with their budget, and he resolved the problem. So, or at least has moved in that direction. So yes, I, I liked him. I liked his energy too. And being young and being able to achieve that, I think, is a great attribute. To just pile on what you said, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You're forgiven. <laughs> if my opinions weren't clear. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to stand up and <laughs> do that dance for him. <laughs> Yvonne. Well, I guess I'm the wild card here because I didn't have him in my top three. Um, I really didn't get that sense of energy from him. I was bothered by the two years as a superintendent. It seemed a little short time to me. Um, yeah. And and also, I didn't get the sense that he's, he's done real innovative things there. Maybe he has, but I, it didn't come through that way to me. Uh, he has a lot of strengths, without a doubt. Um, and like you say, his career has, has been pretty amazing. Um, He's, he's been in Midland before. Certainly he knows uh, what what's important to people in Midland. But I guess I just didn't get that. I really didn't get that sense of energy from him. It seemed like I I just didn't feel that from him, I guess. I just, I just didn't hear a lot of accomplishments come across, a lot of innovative types of things. And so not that I just didn't like him. It's just that I felt that, like, with um, – Rick Seebeck, it was all right out there. You know, I mean, he's done amazing things. And um, same with Mr. Cheryl. So I didn't have Mr. Hall, Dr. Hall in my group of three. I guess I just don't, you know, I don't feel real strong either way. Um, I can't really identify a whole lot of really strong, uh, real uh, assets, and I have nothing real negative either. It just kind of feels sort of ambivalent, there. I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Lynn? Yes. Uh, I have She's in a different country. <laughs> she goes on mute, so it takes her a second to react to the mute, so I give her an eight count and then ask her if she's still there. Oh. <laughs> you ready? Yep. Okay. I um, obviously have had a chance to work with Jeff over the years uh, when he was in Midland, and, and I, I believe he. He's grown a lot even from then, which I felt he exhibited strong leadership skills uh, prior to his leaving for the superintendent. <laughs> he's um, very dedicated, appears to be very good, good communicator, relationship builder. I would my only concern, and I and people touched on it at from both ends, is just the length of time Jeff has had the opportunity to be in a superintendent's role, and he he has accomplished good things in his two years, but in the back of my mind, I wonder if if that's enough experience. And some people have the gift and could be very capable and come to Midland and be very successful, but at the same time, 
with the size of the district that we are and um, some of the issues and challenges that we will face, just as everybody does, and says he needs that little bit more experience. Because Jeff is very polished. He's, he is high energy, as we can see, as, as the education that he has uh, so, so quickly accomplished. So I... Um, it's going to get noisy. Um, I I could go either way. I could go either way with, with offering Jeff a second uh, interview. Okay. Sorry. Well, okay. I'm, I, I hate to be repetitious, and I'm trying to avoid it. I saw Jeff is at the stage where Mr. Seebeck was six years ago in his district district that was vastly struggling, both performance and budget. Uh, Rick came in, it's a smaller district, came into a smaller district and, and to a large degree of course of personality and energy, did all the right things in terms of processes and stuff to get that to where it is today. Where I see Jeff is a more consummate professional, um, has some great ideas, has started putting in the right processes to do the right thing but we don't know if they've worked yet. Okay, and that's just a yet. It's, 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 it's to your point. It, right. it, it's nothing more than a yet. If, if, if he had been there six years, we'd have the same comparison base. Mm -hmm. And so what you got here is, is, is potential. Obviously, he must have good potential the way he's getting jobs and, and rising. But at a superintendent level, we still don't know if the proof is in the pudding of what he does or doesn't do in terms of, of making it work. But we've seen him do many of the right things to make it work. Uh, so that's where I struggle. Uh, and that's why between him and Rick and Mr. Sharo, I, I struggle so much because I see certain positives here, certain vacancies there, certain positives here, certain vacancies there. And you just wonder what the real thing is. And uh, that's why I, I'm not dogmatic on all, any of them other than I would really like to see Mr. Sharo back from the standpoint of if it's just the interview skill that's the issue, let's learn that. You know, and and you know, maybe I throw out there, and I'm going to look at Dave. There's no rule that says we can't bring four. Uh, it's also showing you're kind of wishy-washy and not kind of come to a decision. Um, well, we should bring back all five then, because I want Mrs. <laughs> Weber if we're bringing but, back four. <laughs> but but, uh, but let, let's talk about you know, it was 19, 19, 17. It was really close. Wh what do we do? We've all heard each other. We've all heard each other again. I could go back around and we could say. Well, how would Lynn's affect that? The, uh, yeah, Lynn, ones, you heard all three of these. I mean, the ones that uh, she, she ranked and the yes. ones that we're voting on that's a very good are point. all ones that she got to see. That, that's so a good she point. She would have had a ranking of those. And, and we have that. And Lynn, for, uh, I'm going to turn on your email that you sent me. Did you, did I send that to Cindy and print it? Do, do I have it on my desk? Ah, here it is. Thank you. To just make it more difficult. Um, Lynn, and I'll speak for you out loud and correct me if I'm wrong. She, okay. she had Mr. Sharo, then Jeff, then Rick. Okay. So if you would look at what we just did, she just did the same thing we just did. But she wasn't here for, Mr. Yeah, for Dr. Right. Anderson. No, 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 but, but she was just comparing those three. I mean, along with, so there's oh, no. Sorry. Oh, okay, yeah. there's, yeah, yeah. okay see what I'm getting at? Yeah. So between yeah. those three that we're debating on, she would have ranked them. I, um, Michael, Charo, Jeff, and then Rick. Oh. Okay, oh. and that almost parallels what we just did. If we had Charo and and Jeff tied and, and Rick just a smidgen below. Mm -hmm. And so she's almost reflecting that same. Mm -hmm. So it puts us in the same spot we were with one more with one more vote. Oh, I think we just take the top three. Wait, I, yeah, I'm in favor of looking <laughs> at the three, just speaking for myself. And the, mm -hmm. now that we've had the discussion, could we do another? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do three? We, I would, because we've all had a chance to yep. learn and grow and, right, and maybe right. take away. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, plus and minus other people's is, opinions. Right. Yeah, and I, I I've, I've actually made a few comments just on my yep. running list. Yeah. So, so let us do that. Cindy, can we have six pieces of paper? <laughs> Lynn, can you still hear me? Here. 
I've got oh. I, I, I have an extra. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is I just read your preferences of those three because those are the three we're debating between. And uh, they pretty much reflect what the result was of our first poll of everything in its entirety. Um, we are going to now rank Michael, Jeff, and Rick, okay, from top to bottom in opinion. You've expressed your prior opinion. You've heard everybody else's opinion. Uh, think for a minute on which order you would like to put those three, and I'll come back to you and ask for that. Can, can we're doing all five again. Okay. No. But if we're ranking no. the top three, why? It doesn't matter. They're all coming back for an interview. Yeah. No, no, not the top three. No, we're ranking between three. Michael, the, the three that are Jeff, close. Oh, right, and Rick. right, right, okay. Top two okay. Oh. Anderson. Just between the three that we're struggling with, how to get it down to two. How many points are you? Three, two, one? Three, two, one works. Actually, I'm just put them in yeah, order, and I'll do the points. You. So, Lynn, just think top to bottom. Yeah. Thanks, between Cynthia. Michael, Jeff, and Rick, and I'll come back. Okay. Did you hear what you just said? You use their first names. Just to let you know. <laughs> well, I'm going to go back and put the first names on them. Just so they I don't know. Know. I'll take it either way. <laughs> just pointing it out. I'm sorry. After my public flashing there. <laughs> So okay. then the top two here move forward. That's what our assumption will be assuming they're differentiated. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Yep. Yep. I won't look. Right. <laughs> uh, don't, you can look because we should, we're going to openly talk about them anyway. The one thing of this process is I'm so glad we get to bring them back for a more extensive mm -hmm. interview. Than yes. Time. Especially if it's the first time for some board members, myself included. Hiring a superintendent. Just want to be sure that we're sure. There's so many unanswered questions. You can ask just like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pull up. <laughs> you are pretty excited. I'm certified. Do you want it? I said, are we? Yeah, you want, you want to audit? You can. <laughs> okay, um, just for clarification's sake, I got this half ballot, and they're listed as in from a top to bottom, and then somebody wrote one, two, and three from top to bottom. Um, right, top is number one. Top is number one. Okay, that's fair. That's all oh. I needed to know. I Wait. did. Him, I did it three, two, one. Yeah, my I did top three, was two, three. One. Yeah, I did, my I first three, one was three, did two, one. Three, two, what one. did you do? Okay. <laughs> Let me. The number one pick, and we'll go with the number one, right? Oh, okay. yeah, but Jerry doesn't want to do it like golf. I'm trying to do it like that. I'm trying to do it like that. Yeah, let's resubmit. I'm sorry. Let's resubmit. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Just, just list them. Don't put any numbers on them. Just list them top to bottom. Just list them top to bottom for me. First choice first. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you want to share it? I can share this. Uh, half yeah, go ahead. Tear them up. Yeah. They don't have no, to be very big guys. <laughs> We're not to number them. <laughs> Who are we talking about again? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Jeff, and Rick, and just list them top to bottom. <laughs> Get rid of these so I don't confuse them. Yeah, please. <laughs> Make sure you use your Okay. Which one did you like? Was it the bottom, bottom one you left off? <laughs> oh, we. So three, two, one, from top to bottom. Top is my top. Top is top. All I care is top is top. Top is top. That's Oops, that is a vote. No matter what number you put next to it. Okay, here we go. Everything was entertaining. <laughs> Entertaining and not some other way, okay? <laughs> Whatever happened to that? You have to extend the meeting roll. Oh. Um, we don't have a published end time on the agenda, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I had no idea that was a problem. Right. Wow. <laughs> it's a marathon. <laughs> Right vote count total. Yay. 
Okay, uh, Lynn, unfortunately you get to do this uh, in front of everybody. Uh, can you tell me who your top, middle, and uh, third one is? I believe I will go the same way I did before, Michael, Jeff, and Rick. Okay, everybody stay tuned. I'm double counting, guys. I'm making sure I got it right. Okay. You're just assuming. Okay, here we go. Here's the, the results of this latest uh, polling. Um, Michael at 18, Jeff at 14, and Rick at 10. Okay, we got a little more separation this time. Um, I'll, I'll throw a straw man out there that we should include Michael and Jeff along with Dr. Anderson. Is that what everybody's hearing from this last polling, or anybody have any vigorous objection to that if we were to propose that as a motion? Because let's get it out now before we even go to a motion. Good? Okay. Um, so I guess we should do a motion so that we got a formal uh, motion by the board of who the three candidates should be. So if someone would be so kind to give me a motion with those three candidates' names, and I'll refresh. It was Dr. Wayne Anderson, uh, Michael Sharo and Dr. Jeff Hall. I will move that we invite Dr. Wayne Anderson, Mr. Michael Sharo, and Dr. Jeffrey Hall to the second round of interviews. I support. And we have support. So we have a motion by Mr. McFarland, support by Treasurer Branstad. Uh, any more discussion? It's a tough call, folks, but, but good job. Uh, I'm, I'll do a roll call vote just for good order's sake. Mr. <clears throat> Secretary. President Wasserman. Yes. Um, Vice President Baker. Yes. Um, Secretary Kaminsky? Yes. Treasurer Branstad? Yes. Uh, Member McFarlane? Yes. Member Gordon? Yes. Member Vander Kellen? Yes. We have a unanimous vote. So we have a unanimous 7 0 vote on the slate. Uh, folks, thank you very much. Uh, Dave, just procedurally, you'll be notifying the candidates, I assume? Yes, Mr. Wasserman, I will uh, notify the candidates tomorrow. Um, with the board's agreement, um, I will uh, randomly, uh, by straw poll, assign the candidates to a day so that they don't get their preference uh, for that. I will be, uh, we will hey, be. You don't need to bring in my big speech. <laughs> Wait a minute, Lynn, I'm going to hit the mute button on you. Oops, sorry. <laughs> you need to hit your mute button. I'm sorry. I'm done. No, you can hit, hit your mute. I got to tell you something when we're done. Go ahead. Um, we will be sending you um, a writing, a recommended writing sample um, that will be conducted uh, with each of the candidates, so that you have that before the second interview, so you can see their their writing style and what they do. And generally, that writing sample is designed to measure their kind of extemporaneous writing skills, not their research skills. Um, all these candidates are going to have research skills. You want to see a direct communication. Um, so I will get that to Mr. Wasserman. You can modify it as you wish. Um, the second thing we had talked about is including in that final round some sort of a public presentation uh, for the board so that you can see the candidate's presentation styles um, and using a, a Prezi or a um, PowerPoint, that type of thing. And then I know you've uh, got a series of meet and greets that are uh, set up for the day. Um, would uh, recommend that that day um, you know, give give them a little bit of uh, an hour at least after the thing is to prepare, but uh, maybe begin your uh, final interview with the candidate at, at, did you say in five? Yeah, that's perfect. 5 p.m. I would allocate at least an hour and a half for two hours for that interview. This is a much more freewheeling interview to get at the issues that you talked about tonight. So, you know, come prepared to, to address the issues you have about those candidates, they expect it to be more freewheeling. It, you can uh, now you no longer have to do the same question thing. You're you're free to follow up as board members on on your issues with each each candidate. Um, and then after that interview is complete at seven, let's say, or six forty-five, um, you'll convene and uh, 
have have dinner with the candidate. Um, I just need to know from the board if you want to offer the opportunity for these candidates to bring their spouses to the dinner. We have historically, um, if I recall correctly, and so if the board doesn't doesn't oppose, I would suggest we do that so they can because they'll come to typically come to town, view town. Um, I'm also reaching out to see if if a candidate spouse does not want to tag along on the meet and greets another venue for them to see town. I'm working on if, if the candidate spouse so is so inclined. Okay. We'll, we'll learn that first and then we'll pursue that. Just generally candidates um, don't want their spouse to tag along on that just right. because it's a little uncomfortable sometimes, especially you know in certain situations. And uh, so that's a nice thing if the spouse is attending. And, and please don't make spouse attendance part of your criteria. There may be a work conflict here, maybe an out of out of travel conflict, that type of thing, but it's just a nice opportunity for you to get to know the spouse if they can attend. Um, so with that. Um, uh, Dave, just, uh, I didn't ask you in advance and I apologize. Um, what's your recommendation on how we do questions? Each board member develop a series of questions, two or three questions for each candidate ahead yes. of time. Mm -hmm. Would you prefer to vet those questions and make sure we're legal, or do you have the confidence after seeing us in action that we should be okay? I have the confidence after having seen you in action that you're okay. You okay. you all have the list of illegal questions uh, that are in there, and just you know carefully, carefully stay away from those and and use the guidelines. The, the board was very deliberative about this process. Um, I know this is a, a, you know a very challenging process for the entire board. Um, given the, what the stakes are, and, and your interviews and deliberations were very, very professional. So I um, think that will just continue the way it's going. Okay. And, and just for reminder's sake, when we do go to dinner, it's going to be at the H. Uh, it, it is an open public meeting, uh, so the door will be open during dinner. Um, and so just so you know that. Yeah. Public can join you. Event. They just don't yeah. get the pick from the menu. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So if someone wants to come watch us eat, they're more than welcome to come watch us sit there and eat. <laughs> you will not be served. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a really small point, and I know Cindy's probably already thought of it, but at the dinner, try to have a table set up that allows the candidate to be able to see all of yep. you. We'll um, U-shape it. So if you U-shape it or circular or something like yep. that um, so that they're not having to reach over to, to look down at you because yep. this is an, an, an ideal venue, but dinner can be difficult sometimes. We'll, have, we'll give them their own little kitty table. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Anything else for the good of the order? Seeing none, we are adjourned.